I'm Cameron McIntosh. I'm the author of the Max Booth Future Sleuth series, published by Big Sky Publishing and illustrated by the amazing Dave Atzi. We've already got four books out in the series, with two more coming this year. It's been a lot of fun writing this series, and there's nothing I'd love more than to encourage you all to have a go at writing your own science fiction series or one-off sci-fi story. This is the first in a series of four videos to hopefully get you started. In this video, I'm going to talk about building a world for your story, and in the remaining videos, we'll talk about inventing characters, finding interesting hooks to get the reader interested in your stories, and finally, putting all of these things together to make your story. So first of all, what actually is science fiction? It's a very broad term, but most of the time we use it when we're talking about stories that are set in the distant future or past and feature imagined technological or scientific developments or other big changes to the way people live. Many sci-fi stories take place in other worlds or on other planets. Sci-fi is a lot of fun to write because the options are endless. You can set your story anywhere at any time and fill it with any kinds of characters your imagination can conjure up. Humans, robots, aliens, fluoro green bears, flying monkeys. If you can imagine it, you can put it in your story. Before you can write any kind of story though, you need to decide where the story happens. This is known as the setting or the world of your story. In sci-fi, we often need to think this out very carefully because sci-fi stories are often set in very different times and places from where we find ourselves today. Here are a few useful questions to ask yourself when thinking up the world for a new sci-fi story. When is your story set? It could be far into the future or the past. It could even be set in the present day with visits from time travellers or visitors from faraway planets. Where is your story set? And what does your world look like? Is it a world full of futuristic cities or somewhere more barren like the surface of Mars or somewhere in between? Who lives there? Do a lot of people live in this world? Do they all get along with each other? If not, what sort of things do they disagree on? What are most people's day-to-day -day lives like in this world? If it's a future world, what sorts of jobs still need workers to do them? Do young people still go to school? And if so, how has school changed? What sort of technology is used in this world? Is it very advanced compared to the technology we use today? How does your world work? Who is in charge in your world? Does everyone in this world get treated fairly? Do some people struggle harder than others to get by? When I was thinking up the world of the Max Booth books, I was starting with the character a detective, Max, who lives in the future but who is very interested in the way you and I live now. Because he lives in the future, the first question I had to answer was, when? I figured that Max needed to live far enough into the future that a lot could have changed, but a lot could still be the same too. So I thought 400 years into the future sounded about right. Next, I thought about where the stories would happen and what this future world could look like. I wanted my series to mostly be set in one city. In this city, Blugsville, less well-off people live in huge floating suburbs called Skyburbs. The Skyburbs drift above the city, much to the annoyance of the people on the ground who resent the shadows they cast and look down on the people who live and work up there. The city on the ground is much fancier, a mix of ancient buildings from the 21st century and newer buildings in bright colours and quirky shapes. The who in my series was the easiest bit. I already had my main character in mind, Max, but I wanted him to have a sidekick helper. So I tried to imagine the type of helper a person in the year 2424 might have, and eventually came up with Oscar, Max's robo-dog. Max also has a close human friend, Jesse, who sets him off on many of his missions to identify ancient objects from the 20th and 21st centuries. The other who's in the story are the bad guys, people who want to take all the credit for Max's discoveries. When I thought about the day-to-day -day lives of my characters, I wanted to keep a few big things in common with our present day lives so that readers could still relate to the futuristic world of the story. Most adults still go to work and most kids still go to school, except for Max, who's escaped from his school and is doing everything he can not to go back there. Finally, I had to think about how Max's world works. 
Again, I wanted to make it similar to the way most big cities work today, but with one big difference, the sky burbs. Poorer people like Max live in the sky burbs and usually work there too. Everyone else lives on the ground and enjoys a much more comfortable life there. So that is basically the background work I did before I started writing Max's adventures. I hope these tips have been helpful little seeds for your imagination. Now, once you know what your world is, you'll need to fill it with characters. And that's exactly what we'll be talking about in the next video. Hope to see you there.